and uh, I grew up. Uh, I grew up in a uh, coaching family. My uh, my old man was a long time ball coach, and so from an early age, uh, the relationship that uh, I learned about the coaching profession begins and ends with us in this room. And the biggest thing that I learned is the ability to learn to grow with all the people that you're with uh, professionally. And so at a young age, I got in a position where uh, I, I knew when I was very young that it was something that I wanted to do. And the specifics, and particularly in the offensive line, the, the nuances of the position, learning the position, is what I grew up and uh, became and played. And it's something that I said I want to focus all my energies on uh, learning and coaching this and uh, finding out as much information as I can. Along the way, one thing I did is I talked to as many people as I can, and I still do, because the process, uh, the longer you coach, the less you find out you know, and the more things that you find that you've got to continue to learn and to grow. And so along the way, if there's a training camp I could go to, the same thing that you guys have done, I'd give my ass to the training camp, all right? If there was a coach on the road that I could talk to or visiting my place, I'd grab him, talk to him, and find out what he knew and how he could help me. Uh, I had my eyes open uh, last night and today by Punch. The whole area of Punch, he has taken to a uh, refined level and uh, uh, taken that a whole area where what I'm constantly doing is looking at what uh, I'm doing, reanalyzing what I'm doing and looking for better ways uh, to do it. Uh, I also want you to know that uh, almost every idea I have I don't really consider myself having original ideas. I'm a plagiarizer, which means if I see somebody do it, I can take his idea and I'm trying to incorporate it into what I know. So when you hear what uh, we did and drills we've done, a lot of them come from men that you're going to hear later on in this clinic. And uh, I think you're going to hear as you continue the rest of the afternoon uh, some of really the great line coaches. And I'm proud of being a mushroom, proud of being the association of people like Wiles, who's like I said, work, works his ass off and does a hell of a job. Uh, this afternoon you hear Mike Major, who's done a great job at Jacksonville and taking that line to, to a high level, as well as Beck comes in this afternoon and McNally and Howard Mudd. Like I said, I spent a lot of time talking to those men because I have tremendous respect. And as a plagiarizer, I've stolen. You're not going to hear original ideas. You're going to hear ideas that really are built over years and kind of uh, ground as, as I've grown and, and uh, uh, improve. Now, where I'm going to start, the first area I'm going to start is I'm going to go into drills. That's number one, pass pro drills. Okay, I'm going to take a little sequencing off and kind of hit you on some of our basic nickel runs, and then I'll finish up with some basic uh, pass protection schemes in the nickel area. That's kind of what we'll be focusing on today. All right? Uh, basic mechanics of the pass set. Okay, uh, number two uh, is the punch. And like I said, you had a very detailed explanation of how you use your hands, placement of my hands, how I'm trying to get in the body position on top of the defender, uh, how I'm trying to make contact, how I'm trying to take him, uh, take his space away, how I'm trying to make contact. Number three is the mirror aspect. The aspect of the mirroring or the shadowing effect, however you move your feet, however you get your body in position, is the ability when he makes a move to counter that move but also to bring your feet with your body that you basically stay in the line and the fourth area is what we call recovery is now you're out of balance somebody's got you in a poor position and you've got to do something that that goes beyond the basic ability to mirror or stay in front of them. however you move your feet however you move your hands that i'm going to end up 
uh, bringing myself to a right, right position or else running past the quarterback or running back in. Okay? Uh, it begins right here with a pass set in terms of the elements of the positioning of the body, how your body maintains uh, the joints, how your body ma maintains the, the angles of the mechanics. We are big on uh, what I call body mechanics and bo body angles. Really, it all begins with weightlifting the ability to sink your ass down, the ability to keep your back straight, the, be the ability to be a knee bender, your head back over the balls of your feet, and the ability on quickness, on speed from the three point position. We start from the hardest drill. When you get in a nickel, a lot of times you'll see it's basically up. But we start from the hardest position, is from a down three point position to a set. How fast can you do that? How fast can you get yourself to a right position? How fast can you get your shoulders and hands and head into a set position with a, uh, mechan uh, with a balanced position? And that's based on your set. It's really based upon the alignment of the defender. Every time that defender widens out on you, it forces your feet to move a little bit farther to get a little more of a widening effect so that I want to stay frontal. And the term we use in our pass set is buy him. We want to buy him at the line of scrimmage. We're going to get both hands on us, be as physical as we can. And like I said, all things touch was talking about, we believe in terms of the mechanics of the punch, physicalness, that we're going to make a stand as close to the line of scrimmage as we can. Okay? We're trying to basically stay square to the line of scrimmage. We want an initial stand, stand like I said, uh, as close to the line of scrimmage as we can. Now, that's going to dictate a lot by the position of the defender, how wide he is. I love to block your ass right at the line of scrimmage, but if you move too, too damn wide on me, I go too flat, I'm going to lose my angle. I'm going to lose my leverage and it's going to turn my camera or my ass to the sideline, which I never want to do. I'm trying, basically, to stay as square line as terms as I can. Okay? Now, uh, what I want to do is always keep my feet alive. I want to keep my foot, uh, feet in a position we call kick slide. We talk about the position of power step. Those things are very long-term terms that I learned, like I said, a long time ago. Uh, Wampler and Mack and some of those guys, and I've incorporated that, and that has, has to do with the body weight and my weight on the inside leg as I step. Now one thing that's important to me here, and it takes a lot of emphasis to me, is the term egg beat, or I use a, a, a term pee pee steps, the feet are chatty Cathy, going too fast, too quick. What I lose is functional strength on my body, so what I'm trying to do is my, with my weight on my inside leg, that I've always got power generated from my ass and my mechanics and my hips are down low, so as I get in the position here, I can generate power with my feet. We believe in, I want my feet on the ground, I want to make contact with the defender. If the feet are ever off the ground or caught in between, then functional strength is out the window. Same thing if your feet are nervous or egg beat too fast. If he bulls, all you'd have to do is pick your feet up rapid fire too quick. His ability to bull, knock your ass back to the quarterback is great. It's, it's to a great degree. And the other thing too with the feet is, is as Keeping your heels down in general, that's another thing I, I, we would encourage our players is if you get high toed, your ability to functional strength and stop the defender becomes very limited. When I keep, when I keep uh, contact with my heels, even though the weight's still on the balls of the feet, so it isn't like my weight's rolled into my ass or my heels, it's still on the balls of my feet, but the ability to keep my feet flat gives me more functional strength because the whole thing I'm trying to do is to buy him and attack him and tight the line scrimmage. And there's word patience. A lot of that involves, a lot of that involves what you do, what you do with your, uh, <coughs> what you do with your, uh, your head, your your mechanics of your punch, that you don't get out of control. And that's where the patience involved. And also the widening effect of the defender when he goes wide, we get you know you get so intent on trying to punch the piss out close to the line of scrimmage that you get an overextension effect. Overextension is still a bad word. Okay, we want to make sure any inside fakes, any inside movements, we're, we, we are making sure we never get beat to the inside. So that's still mechanically in our thinking. Okay, now, eyes properly on the target of the defender. I can tell you this, one of the worst habits that young players have is they lose a, a minute focus. And I remember the uh, guy did a great job of explaining to me, Howard, when I talked the ability to see a very small target, a very small aiming point. Uh, the number, a portion of the number, uh, two inches inside uh, on the edge of the number. Okay, now what happens is a lot of times players, and if you just stand the opposite side and you look at their eye contact, what they're doing is they're seeing a big target. What they're doing is they listen to touch, 
I see small target, and I have peripheral vision to the rest of it, to that square, that box he was looking at. What you look at young players, you stand the opposite side, and I'll look beyond, I'll look at your shoulders to your head, because there's more extraneous motion occurring with my upper body than it is really with my numbers. I want to be patient in terms of always seeing the target and looking at the target. And also just something simple, keeping your eyes big. Because what happens a lot of times is you watch it, it's amazing the number of guys that get a flinching effect, or when they punch, they end up losing sight and getting leverage. So a lot of times just keeping your eyes big, and you can do things, like we used to do things flinch drill in the off season, still do, where you can get the eyes just keeping them big that they don't lose sight of the target of the defender. Stay coiled. Better to get around, and all these are mixed in with those four basic fundamentals. This involves mirror and also recovery. When he gets to a position that he's beyond my cylinder, he's outside of my framework, if, even though I've said, drive, buy him at the line of scrimmage, we we'll attack his ass at the line of scrimmage. When he gets here, it is better to lose some ground, in our opinion, lose back, and then reestablish the buy to the firm position, rather than saying arbitrarily, I'm going to knock your ass right here and hold your position. Because if it gets into swinging my ass, or give them my ground to get vertically on top and establish that frontal position we want to be frontal as much as we can. Okay? Uh, okay, again, regain your position. Very important here. Stick. And what that means is really pass pro's physical. What you want to do is take it out of the context that it is a retreat type blocking and it's give off ground, all those types of things. Never get beat to the inside. And some of this, what's happening is, and we're a big slide team. And given the fact that we're slide, is really what's happening is that's based upon more of a drop back man type principle, base type principle. You never want to give edge to the inside. A lot of protection, when you start going slide, you start working half a man to the outside, and it becomes very specific. Really, you're talking to a one on one drill, which is you start analyzing your percentage of man protections. I'm talking about base pickups or slide protections, and they're really two fundamental different deals. Okay, never overset the outside. Uh, fake, uh, keep a, keep poise when you break down. I think what uh, Touch, I think you alluded to in there a little bit, is what happens again with uh, players when you begin, when you get your ass beat once or twice in pass pro, you get a little shaky and all of a sudden you start losing your fundamentals, your ability, ability for a player to balance himself back up, to right himself when he's off groove, to figure out when he's made a mistake, a recurring mistake, and that's where they'll kind of kick our ass in our league is once they figure out what you're susceptible to, the bull or the rip or club or head fake, unfortunately, they keep on giving it to you like a curveball. They're going to keep on giving you what you have to do. What the, what the veteran player learns is he learns to write himself back up. He learns to correct himself in a one-on-one -on -one drill. What the younger player does, he goes to, he go, he falls all hell to, to pieces, and he can't rectify, figure out. That's what takes the time. That's what takes the experience. Okay, now, moving over to uh, the, the techniques by position. And again, I talked about the setup, and that's the ability to come to a position. All we want to do is maintain a frontal position. Uh, I'm used to always taking a step, and very simply, my feet use near step. That's about as simple as I can. So I never want my body coming across, my offside foot coming across to where I end up with a crossover effect. Uh, and again, I'm talking a protection now. If I'm talking about a basic protection, like a seven-man pickup, Basically, we're going to step with a frontal position, a head up two shade, is I'm going to step with an inside step with my feet. Okay, now, if he's, a near, uh, he's an outside shade, shoulder shade or wider, I'm going to step with a near foot to the side of the direction and begin my kick slide based upon the width of the technique and how far that he's coming across. All I really want to do, in fact, I, I think it was Rad used the one, where if I didn't have to move my feet, don't move my feet. And there's really merit to that. The only thing, reason we do is we like the feeling of power on contact. So I tie my punch and my jam with my foot when I put it on the ground. But if I had a frontal position and could just pick my, pick my hand up, if I have what I want by my number shade, by my target on the defender, I do it right now. I do it every time. Okay, the mirror drill. And we've got several different ways of doing the mirror drill. And, and again, uh, as we mirror, we're talking about the ability to keep uh, my weight on a certain leg, to shadow the defender. We'll do them. We've got sequencing, and you'll see these coming up later. When you start off, you can do them hands behind your back, just as a mirror. Okay, and these are all drills. It's the ability to shadow the defender. Target, 
small target, number, avoid the shaking of the shoulders. You're, you're, you're kind of mixing a little bit. You're going to hear the punch because a lot of times what you get is shaking effects. And what we'll do is we'll mirror defender and fight strength. If he ever shakes in tight quarters, in particular as a guard, we will try and break the rhythm with a little punch to regather ourselves to take his rhythm away, keep us on rhythm. Okay, another way of saying when we mirror is we don't, there's a, there's a uh, Arthur Murray dance studio in California, we don't dance his dance. We try and dance our own dance when we're rhythming and stay on our rhythm, not his rhythm. And so what happens when you mirror is the, D, the offensive guy has a tendency, if you're not careful, to just cha-cha his cha-cha. And as I do that, he's able to pull my weight the wrong direction of the body mechanics. Really what I want to do is do my own deal, and then wherever he's in quarters, I'm going to use my hands as punch mechanisms to kind of track him off balance while again I work my feet, body mechanics, arch in the back, head back, neck bridge, which is real important. A lot of times you watch players, the punch talk about getting tired like this. One of the biggest areas to get tired is down here, down here in the quad strength, lower back, and the head. And the longer they go, the more they'll waistband head forward and be overextended. A lot of times, you can see it from their stance. You can see it right from their stance. Begins with their stance. When the weight gets tired, their head goes down. They end up arched back. They end up slowing their pass set. The mechanics of the pass set, they end up being overextended, not a control. Okay? And, and uh, here, moving down over here, is a little area that's very important. All right? Yeah, we're not hoppers, we're kick sliders. We're always trying to keep our both feet on contact. And sometimes it could look like it's almost close to me. See my action? The two-step and recovery in terms of how I kick slide and get over there. We're trying to keep the, our feet on the ground as close as we can. Okay, we've got a power light, post, uh, post foot, which is weight on the inside. And actually the rhythm a lot of times you teach them to do this. But the mechanism on a wide rusher should be quick enough where they're moving Simultaneous, where it isn't like it's boom, 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 boom. You teach them slow the rhythm of the feet and the weight inside, but the actual action on the wider technique, when my feet got to move, my feet move as fast as the defender forces me to move my feet. So if he's running a wide angle, or let's say we have a fan scheme with a guard and tackle on the D end and an outside backer, when I move, my feet are going to have to move as fast as he is, which is damn fast. Okay? Uh, all right, now, in the punch, and you know, like I said, he's done a great job of uh, talking about the punch. We keep our thumbs together when we hit. Okay, we want our thumbs up, we want our elbows in, we want our shoulders back. We punch in a mechanism like this. We would be about a four to six inch puncher and striker. I want my weight to the side of the defender as he comes, whichever way he's weaving. We'll do, you see, see some drills work laterally. That's all we're doing is timing my punch with my feet as I hit on the ground. And one thing to continue, uh, Touch had an interesting word in there. He talked about hyperextending my elbows. And there's a point we talk about trying to get full extension of the arms, but you know what? They're probably about an inch or two short of full lockout because, and I use the term Frankenstein. What happens if you get your arms, that term hyperextended, what it has a tendency to do is rotate my head and shoulders at the end a little forward, which creates that overextending effect. So what we really want to do is we punch, is to punch, we talk about tricep strength right here as we jam, and as we do, we're slightly off the bend line, and that's where I can keep my power. Now the other reason we do it is we describe our arms like shock absorbers, okay? Or, you know, like a door jam, how it comes back like this with the constant pressure. And the point is, if you get your arms fully locked out, to me, to do the wedge or the trap, like what uh, Tench was talking, is gonna be real hard because I'm already involving my head. So by having my, my arms and my elbows slightly off the, the pure straight hyperextended position, that lets me snap them in, break an arm, whatever I have to do to do a hand replacement drill. Okay? Okay, and the last element 
The last element is, uh, is recovery. Is in terms of that ability to bring yourself back into a right position and uh, uh, kind of come to balance is a good way to describe it. Okay, now the tackles. I'm going to describe this very simply. All we're doing, I mentioned he was a frontal position on the defender. If he was in a four, head up position, I would take a step, I'd look just like a guard does. If he's in a five, a tight five, we would take a near step and I would step inside number target and I'd balance up my feet. There's a little thing back to that near step position. There's a little thing, when do I go near foot or when do I protect the hole, the inside move and step inside? It really has to do how good and fast I am and how quick and flat he can come inside. So it becomes for us, when in doubt, we're trying to go near step every time we can. But if he goes, has the ability, he's quicker than I am, and I'm a little slew foot and slower, is I might on a slight outside shade get to a position where I'll jam the foot in the ground because I don't want to ever give up the hole. That's where the compromise begins. If I ever create what we call as a bail-off effect where my, where my foot comes out. From there, it's really based upon the angle of the defender, how much width he gets, and how far I'm going to kick slide. We actually try and have a game plan, a GP, on the width, whether I take a two-step set, or I come here in three-step set, and now I'm working at what I call, we call as a 45-degree angle. We're coaching to try and keep his shoulders at square to the line of scrimmage. Now, in actuality, there's a turning effect when I make contact. The problem is, with most younger players, to me, we talk too much about getting on top of the defender. What it does is you have ability. They're going to naturally do that anyway. That's going to take care of their techniques. This is the worst. This is cardinal sin when I turn my shoulders to the sideline. So what we're doing is working a 45 degree angle. We always want our feet in contact. I'm favoring the inside number. Again, I'm talking about a man protection, not a slide. And we've got to say help by the inside guard, center guard coming to me. Okay? And then I'm playing a game with the position of my hands how tight he is. If he moves into a bull position on me, a frontal, then I'm going to use a two-arm hand bench press and I'm going to hold my leverage and anchor down. And you're going to see some drills we call the push-pull anchor drill. A lot of people in the league uh, do it. And uh, to me, in terms of leverage, looking strong, powerful on film, that's where it begins. The wider he goes, all I'm going to do is maintain my kick slide, my position, my kick slide, and now you're playing a game with hand positions, really what you're doing. You're playing a game with the weight position, that the weight distribution stays inside. So if he comes flat inside, I can abort, power step, come back inside and quit. The key thing is if you tilt your weight too far out or you overstrike or get any clicking heels effect, what I do is turn my shoulders in my ability to recover, right myself up, I'm off balance, I'm out of line with my mechanics of my body. I'm always trying to keep basically my feet underneath my armpits and keeping balance again in my mechanics. And we call it a pretty world. What we're trying to do to, to us, football players should look balanced, controlled, powerful, and in good mechanics when they hit, under control. Okay? End zone film to us is like a confession. You're bearing your soul. So what you see is even though guy, we have GMG, which is blocking your guy, but the key thing is that you have a pretty rule when you come on film that you look mechanically balanced and you're showing the celluloid around the film, the league. That you're, that you're under control, that your feet never jump the midline, that's where the recovery aspect moves in. Okay, uh, we've talked about the, the, uh, uh, the mirror, okay, in the relative position, okay, and then uh, we talked about the recovery. Now, what I encourage you all to do, what we try and do, is we'll come up with a little drill, drill sheet, like everyday things. And we'll do this, especially for the younger players, is things that you can take down, and they're not in particular order that you're going to see right now, but you can do certain mechanics like punch. was talking about the punch drills. I mean, hell, you just spend, what, an hour and a half just doing all the hand drills, hand mechanics. You can go as detailed as you can based on your time allotment and how much time you have. You can stagger these. Like if we're working four days a week, we might do, uh, you know, two hands heavy, uh, two days heavy hands. Uh, we might do uh, more mirror drills. We might focus on the run. So we'll kind of orient that, kind of change that, and revamp it based upon things we're doing. <clears throat> okay, and again, in the sequencing, the first one I'm going to step over here, push-pull drill, and you're going to see this on film. And if I had, like, one little thing we're looking for for football players is if, you can, if you're flexible in your hips, if you have the ability to keep your back uh, straight, if you have the ability to sink down in this position, 
you've got a chance based upon work ethic. Work ethic is probably one, intangibles. I'm talking about how you lift, how you prepare, how you punch. All those things can take pressure off your lower body. But the body mechanics of how you get yourself into as a football player really are critical, critical in terms of kick sliding. Okay, we'll do things just feeling mechanics. A lot of times when you push on somebody, what they have a tendency to do is to just immediately give off ground, to give off pressure or give off ground. What we're trying to do is we're trying to fight pressure. When you push on us, we're trying to resist back. We're trying to give ground grudgingly. And when I sit, as you push on me, I want to get the effect of resetting my feet and also keeping my ass down. Because the tendency is, when you push on young players and they push, what they want to do is they extend their legs and they lose their lower body leverage. And you really, as mechanically, never want your feet that long off the ground. What you want, whether people teach hop and we step back, you want an action of a recoil and a reset with my feet. But when he pushes on me, I want to get a sinking effect, a lower my ass and my hips, arch in the back, it's hurting like hell, uh, and reset. Now I'll give you this. When I was in uh, uh, high school getting recruited, McKittrick, Bob McKittrick was at UCLA at the time, a great line coach of the 49ers. He did a drill skiers exercise. You talk about how fundamentals of the game really don't change. Back against the wall, ass down, 45 degree angle. You put your knees straight ahead. I'm talking about we were down to almost a parallel position. You held it for three minutes. Five minutes. I just take, take all your, your young linemen and do that with them, and you'll find the first thing you're going to do is shake in the quads. That's one of the things. Hell, I started doing that every day. You know, as much as I could, I had no ass. Some guys, you know, if you're not big, that's just the way you are. But down here, you'll, they'll feel it right away. Their ability to stay in that position, they're going to come back, oh, man, that's going to hurt down here in all their lower extremities. But that's really where the power is. Now, when you pull on me, what you want to do is we want them to resist. So if I'm pulling this way, I am neck bridging up, arching my back back, and keeping my weight in my ass, trying to look up. Now the tendency is a lot of times they go forward and they lose their mechanics. Now you start as slow as you have to do to teach the drill. You start walking the hand just so they feel it. What you do with a lot of younger players when we start is they egg beat their feet. Their feet are going, they're whipping them, and they have a rapid fire piston, but they have no functional strength. You can't stop the ball. The problem is I have no power on the point of contact. So the whole idea is that you're trying to get them to keep their fulcrum down, their power in their ass, and their lowers. And then as I go, I have the ability to reset, reset, he strains, trying to keep my body weight from mechanics all back in my ass, all my power back in my ass as I go. And we'll do those, like I said, we'll do them, again, walking them, pushing slow, grabbing the head, shoving them, getting to a body position where you can feel power, power generating strength on contact with really a kick slide principle. See it? It all gets back to your fundamentals of how you're teaching your pass pro and your basic technique. And then we'll do it active. That's what I have in these drills that you'll see in a little bit. Okay, now, kick slides. To me, let's say you're teaching about the quarterback. Everybody ever heard talk about the quarterback, they talk about how fast do you go to point A, point B, and the mechanics position of his feet. Okay, now, that's the same thing with the lineman. He's got to learn. He needs a 1,000 reps just working his feet. Whatever that a drill is, he can do them. We do them on about a five-yard angle, and we'll do sets of... How many ever were doing that day? Five in a row. Boom, boom, boom. Kick slide, kick slide, kick slide, kick slide. That's as fast as we can. And you will see, as they get tired, they come back. The inside leg, too long. See the position across my body? I want the foot coming at a 45 degree. One of the best explanations I ever had about the angle of the 45 degree as I come is uh, Jerry Wampler, great line coach. Bunch of different teams. And he described it as a shot putter, how he goes in his angle. And what a shot putter does is all my weight is on this inside leg, and what I'm really doing is popping that leg right there with an effect because the tendency that most players have, it's the second step that gets you in problem. Most of the time, you can get the first step, 
in a good position. But what they do is on a wider rusher, again, I'm talking more tackles here, is they have a tendency to cross their body with the second step, to come too flat in the cross and pull my weight over. They lose sight of the fact, especially it could even be, let's say it's a good, like a ghost nine position here, okay? And so it's a ghost nine, it could be, first two could be done, good. Then the second two, the tendency is, I want to front up the defender, I want to pull my leg across my body. It is a hard idea, playing wise, especially on the left tackle, when you're talking about the speed rushers, to keep this leg in line. And so this action, a lot of times learning wise, I would grab this hip and actually pull the ass back in this position. I'll take my hand in his back to maintain the mechanics that I stay on that angle where I'm as basically as frontal on the defender as I can. Okay? We'll do this down the line. We'll do we'll do a just flat lateral. And again, we're just working, it's all all they are are foot drills as I go. Working back and forth as I go. Okay? It begins the incorporation of the mirror drill, just in terms of recovery and recovery. But you just go like in a five yard box, go lateral, another set, five sets in a row. Then switch direction. Now you're power stepping or post stepping in the line. Teaching young linemen how to move their feet, how to stay in balance when they get tired, keeping your ass down, keeping your legs underneath you, that you're generating power, that your feet are controlled, and your feet are basically all under your knees, under your armpits in position. Okay? Uh, now, moving ahead. Mirror drill. Okay, now, mirror drill, whatever that is, when he's moving and you're trying to get stay with him, that's what we call mirror drill. It's a shadowing effect. When we start, when we start, uh, we'll start with the hands behind the back just to teach the sequencing of the feet, the rhythm of the feet. It's a great drill if you find your legs, the feet are chattering, too nervous. When he moves, you'll never catch up. You'll always be hopping. You'll always be a step behind with your body mechanics. We stay in front of the cones and into his chest because if you drift back or sometimes Sometimes we used to do it right lateral with the cones, and the problem is they have a drifting effect where they don't stay in as numbers. We want to be able to basically, if I had my hands extended, touch the numbers. We'll move as physical as the drill becomes. They can work them lateral. We'll work them lateral for the for the uh, for the lateral movement. Sometimes you want to make it competitive off season. You can have a little. You can score it. You can widen out, and then the kid keeps going trying to score around the corner with a juke move and get back in inside the cone and start over again with the balance, which in a certain way, if the guy gets off balance, you teach a little bit of the beginnings of recoverability, where the guy comes back to balance and position. Okay, then you'll involve, you involve the hands and we'll make it come back. We'll go pretty hard as the guy works. We'll be punching. When you get pads on, you can be doing all the things, and incorporating what Tunch was talking about with the center line and the position of mechanics and my hands and the center of your body. That's why eventually they overlap with a punch, okay, with their coverability, with my mirror, but they're incorporated all in foot line drills. Okay, finally at the end, is you'll see an area where it says mirror pass set on a 45 degree. So now what we've done is taken it one step further, and really what happens is you take, a, I don't care if it's a guard or tackle, Okay, you got a cone, and you got a cone. How wide you put the cone? Now the kid's working that kick slide, that 45 degree angle, as his kick slide and kick slide. We'll put a guy, it's a one shot shoot your wide mirror drill is what it is. So at this, at this time, he's got one little ditty, basically to go for the far cone, and now you're hustling your ass off to stay mechanically aligned, and also with my feet quick enough that I'm moving as fast as the defender, okay? We'll let him give it a, a quick up and under move. So right now, quick move. So we'll check his weight distribution, that there's nothing leaning to the outside, that there's nothing leaning outside where he, I can get pulled outside. Because a lot of times, especially you put him on a shoulder shade, they have a tendency to overstep and turn my shoulder. See, as I'm rotating my offside arm across my body, and that's going to that's gonna give him the ability to beat me right now inside. We'll let him give, like a little hesitation move, a little, a little head fake move, and then work back inside rip or upfield. A, a one shot, trying really all we're doing is a pass rush drill, in tight quarters and basically a mirror sequencing drill. When they kick slide, this is back on the kick slide.